Well, we've a very new charity. We've been going for six months now, and um, it all started with a story um, in 1970, um, where um, a colleague of mine who worked at Human Dogs um, had a pet dog, pet Dalmatian, who kept showing real interest um, on a very small mole on her leg. And this dog kept on and on sniffing at this mole and licking at this mole, um, to the point where um, the lady whose name's Gillian became concerned. And um, she went to her doctor. She was in her 20s. And the doctor said that she, he didn't think there was anything unusual about the mole. It wasn't itching and it wasn't bleeding. But um, he said he would take it off under local anaesthetic, which he did. And um, 10 days later, Jill was called back to be told she had um, malignant melanoma, the most serious form of skin cancer, and would have almost certainly um, died if she hadn't had this early warning. And over the years from that story on, there have been a number of stories around the world of dogs that have been seeming to indicate or warn the owners about cancer. So in um, 2003, um, it just happened that Jill, who was the lady who'd had the original uh, cancer on her leg, um, heard a doctor called Dr Church speaking on the radio, Radio 4, and he was talking about some work he was doing with maggots. Um, using maggots to clean wounds and it came from uh, stories that in the trenches and the, the First World War the people that had maggots in the wounds were actually not getting gangrene and, and, and were surviving whereas others were dying and he'd done some research and he discovered which maggot it was that cleaned the wounds so during his interview he was asked whether he thought there was any other way in which sort of animals in the broader sense and, and humans could work together to protect human health and he said it was his belief that dogs might be able to smell cancer. Jill came rushing into work to speak to me and said, you've got to ring this doctor. He thinks that dogs might be able to smell cancer and he wants somebody to train a dog. So we rang Dr Church and found that as it happened, Julian, myself and Dr Church all live within 20 minutes of each other. So um, we then formed a partnership with the Buckinghamshire Hospitals NHS Trust and a small charity research charity called Amaderm. And we did the first proof of principle study. This is the first study in the world which was a scientifically robust study to find out whether dogs could be trained to identify the odour of cancer. And we actually used bladder cancer as a start. The reason being that we made the assumption that if a tumour was in the bladder, and that tumour was dropping, ce dropping cells into the urine, that these cells might be passed, and that the dogs might be able to detect that these cells had a different odour to the odour of um, normal cells, normal healthy cells. And we did find that we were able to t train a team of dogs. Um, it was all done very much on a shoestring. We did it in our spare time. We all had full-time jobs. But um, we did a study, and the study was published in the British Medical Journal. And, uh, it showed for the first time that dogs were able to smell the odour of cancer. It's very difficult to train a dog to detect cancer because um, of two reasons. One, when you actually, uh, if you remove, if you cut cancer out of the body, it changes from being a living tumour to being a dead tumour. And teaching a dog to recognise the smell of a dead tumour does not teach you anything about live tumours. So um, you have to use um, things that have come in contact with the tumour, um, urine, breath, um, and you uh, have to teach the dog a discrimination exercise. And it's a process where the dog learns to discrim discriminate more and more accurately. It isn't like training for drugs or explosive work. In that situation, you have that thing and you train the dog to find that thing and then progressively make it more and more difficult to find it. So you make the place bigger that a dog has to search or you make the thing you're asking the dog to find smaller. But in the case of cancer detection, we haven't got that thing to show the dog. So what we have to do is do discrimination exercises to teach the dog that some of the urine samples are samples that we're interested in and some aren't, and you have to get the dog to make the next step. And it's a very difficult and long process. Yeah. For the um, actual uh, dog's work, we um, present the samples in what we call a carousel, which is a bit like a, a, a roundabout that uh, you used to sit on when you were children. But each arm, you can put a sample. We put a half milliliter sample of urine in each arm, and the dog um, screens the samples by going round the carousel and sniffing each sample um, once at a time. Um, 
We tend to find that gun dogs are the best, uh, not just that they have got very good noses, but it's the amount of focus. Obviously to train this work, because it's very complicated work, we need dogs that are very, very motivated. They have to have a very high hunt drive and good focus and concentration, and they have to want to work with you. The long-term goal is not that there'll be hundreds of dogs in doctor surgeries that will screen people as they come in and out. The long-term goal is that this work will um, assist the scientists in um, identifying what smell the cancer gives off and this will be used for diagnosis in the future and what the scientists are going to try and do is mimic the dog's nose so that perhaps in 15 20 years time we'll all go to the doctor's surgery we'll all give a urine sample and a breath sample and those samples will be screened for cancer volatiles that's sort of where the science is leading us but at this stage the dog is absolutely paramount in teaching us has cancer got a smell what is the smell does one cancer smell different to another? Is one cancer more easy to, to, to uh, identify by odour than another? So many questions that the scientists have got no idea uh, at this moment. Um, in fact, when our first study was published, it was the first time in the world that it had ever been known that cancer had a smell.